welcome to another review by LNERFAN4472. Um, sorry it's taken me so long to get this video out, but this is actually the video where I said to you guys in the channel update uh, I was going to buy a locomotive between uh, 65 and 75 pounds. And this is it, right here. But the problem is, it's not worth 65 quid. It's worth 150. The amount of detail that is inside and outside of this locomotive is breathtaking. Now let's look at the box first. I've already taken the locomotive out because I've already applied various bits of details such as the coupling rods and um, uh, the brake rods underneath and everything. So let's just take a quick look at the box. Um, the packaging is really decent. It's that sort of packaging where you um, get those two things on the side and you pull those off and then you can just simply lift the box. There's still the tissue paper which no one seems to like. Um, they need to get rid of that. They need to get rid of that. Please help me. Please. Right, so first let's look at the box. Um, Hornby, steam locomotive, weathered edition, obviously. £65, that's a lie. Minimum radius, 438mm. So that proves it's super detail. And on the back, we've got a little brief history about the locomotive. Look, there's a picture of my locomotive. Fantastic. I'll just read the first paragraph. The Patriot class 460 locomotives were built by the London Midland and Scottish Railway and designed by Sir Henry Fowler. A total of 52 express passenger steam locomotives were produced, combining the chassis of the Royal Scot with the boiler of the large Clawtons, I believe that is. Um, if you want to read the rest of it, um, I'll put it in the description so you can see. Um, one, another interesting fact, they're also nicknamed Baby Scots. Anyway, enough of the boring old box, away with you. Let's have a look at the locomotive. There we go. Now we'll come back when the camera is focused. Okay, now that we're focused, I can show you most of the detail. Now the first noticeable piece of detail is obviously the weathering. The weathering is there. The weathering is good, in my opinion. Some people don't like the Hornby weathering. They say the Hornby just tends to give it a spray all over. But no, I think it's distributed evenly throughout the bodywork, and it looks fine. It looks absolutely fine. Strong buffers, as usual. Expect strong buffers all the time. And we've got an interesting three link coupling here. It doesn't really do anything, but it's there just for detail and it's fantastic. Got a, got a little pressure pipe there. I still need to super glue that in. Got the detail at the front. They need um home needs to start implementing where the smoke butt doors can actually open. That would be amazing. That would just make my day. Loads of detail on the side. Um I don't know what other there's the only thing I know is that that's the reverser. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's the reverser just there. The linkage is also weathered. Oh, it's just fantastic. I'm speechless. I hope you can see in there. There's plenty of cab detail. It's all painted, like the A4 Pacifics. I don't see how I got this for 65 quid. It's just amazing value for money. If I could give it a rating out of value for money, it would be 11. It would not be 10. Because this is this looks like it's worth more than 100 quid. I suppose it was in the shop for a few years, so it had to go. There it is. But now, let's actually move on to the downsides of this locomotive. I had massive, massive problems with um, the installation of the decoder with this locomotive. Because if you look at most locomotives these days, if I just move here, um, most of them have like a wire just there connecting to the tender, so you can take the tender apart and stick the decoder in there. Not in this. No, 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 not in this. Now let me tell you what exactly happened. I brought it home, anxious as I was to open it up. I wanted to put the decoder in because obviously I I don't like analogue. So there we go, I tried to put the decoder in. So I take the body off, as you do, and um, that went fine. But then there's almost no space here. Basically the only place you've got to put the decoder is in this bit here. This bit's got like a big massive block, a big massive metal block just in the front of the smoke box, um, just so it can distribute the weight evenly. And um, back here, there's also another block to distribute the weight evenly, obviously to give it downforce. I've got nothing against that, that's fantastic. But now the, dec the decoder is currently sitting in there, and I was trying to get it in there before. And when I finally got the body back on, I thought everything was okay. No, it wasn't okay. Because then, um, the wheels would move a certain amount, and then they'd lock up and go click, 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 click. They and they'd just stay like that. So then I opened it up. It took me about two days to find out what the problem was. I don't know what it's called, but basically there was a little piece of the motor just here, 
and it was moving out of place and it was um, coming out of contact with whatever it needed um, to do. I think it was something to do with the motor, it was something really important and um, that wasn't in place. So I super glued that down into place and um, I was careless with the super glue on one of the wheels locked up um, with the super glue. That was a nightmare. Eventually managed to sort that. Then you thought it couldn't get any worse. Um, there's a little bolt or nut, if you will, in there that holds all the linkage in place. That goes and falls out. That wasn't too much of a hassle, but I did manage to get it back in. But um, half the time, this rod was just hanging off and it looked like it had a broken leg. And I've got a problem I'm still trying to deal with. Basically, what um, this thing here, which holds this in place, another one that goes backwards and forwards, that transfers it all through the coupling to the linkage, that's hanging down and sometimes that falls out and it all locks up and um, I think it's on the verge of um, snapping soon so I'm, I'm going to go get it checked out soon and um, hopefully it will all end happily but no, yes it's fantastic in detail I just wish I could have um, put the decoder in the tender instead but um, yeah, still fantastic loco once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, like and favourite this video. And um, just a quick message regarding Railfest. Um, I'll be going on the 4th of June. And um, if you want to see me, um, meet me at Flying Scotsman because I'll be probably staring at her in Arlanda.